Fort Triumph is a strategy game, sure, but it's also a dumb decisions you made in Dungeons & Dragons simulator. It's the kind of game where it's tempting to use your fire-based abilities to solve every single problem. And then you set up a flame blast to hit a goblin, but also set the pillar you were using as cover on fire, and then it falls on your head. I'm Jody McGregor, this is PC Gamer, and if you ever had a game of D&D go completely off the rails because somebody cast Fireball in a room too small to contain it, then you will appreciate this game. It's got an overworld map right out of Heroes of Might and Magic or King's Bounty, but when you pick a fight with some skeletons, bandits, or priests, I don't know why, but I fight a lot of priests. When you pick a fight, it turns into a fantasy version of XCOM's tactical turn-based combat but with physics. You can cast spells to push stuff, shoot grappling hooks to pull it, or just walk one of your warriors over to kick things, whether those things are trees, crates, boulders, or the bad guys. Everything falls over or slides around at the slightest nudge, and if anything bumps into a character, including another character, they'll be stunned. Stunned characters can still move, but not attack, so the ideal turn ends with every single enemy stunned, so that all they can do is run over to a different bit of cover that you can then kick at them, repeating the whole process. It's physics as physical comedy. When I compare this game to Dungeons & Dragons, I mean specifically the kind of Dungeons & Dragons where the DM is drinking. The players keep trying to befriend all the monsters, and at least one player is doing an outrageous accent which is to say, the best kind of Dungeons & Dragons. It's more Terry Pratchett than George R. R. Martin, with wizards who have student loans to pay off and trolls who work as bouncers at the local tavern. Like Pratchett's books, there's a bit of sly commentary too. It treats adventuring like it's part of the gig economy, with your heroes as exploited and disposable workers. Mostly though, it's a game where you kick over trees, or have trees kicked over on you, a uh, knockabout, deeply silly strategy game, where the blast radius of the fireball spell seems designed so that it will always hit something you don't want it to hit. Honestly, why do we keep casting fire spells indoors, guys? This happens every time. 